I want to thank you for joining us today for Tuesday Bible Study. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for this privilege and opportunity to gather to you, with you today in Bible study. Pray that you'd open up your word to us. For you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, once again, you notice the word that we've got on here and anger. And of course, I wore this shirt for a reason for those who can't tell. One of those things that got me really angry, okay, is our Pitt Panthers playing, of course, Michigan State this last December, a game they should have won. Of course, I'm not bitter about it, the fact that we lost our number one quarterback who decided not to play and just prepare for the NFL. Whatever. Could have won, but what can you do? Gets me angry, right? Of course, you keep rehearsing these things, it becomes bitterness. That's really bad. Anger itself is not a bad thing. That's what we talked about on Sunday, and I hope and encourage you to take the opportunity to hear the sermon from Sunday. Anger is of God in particular circumstances. It is a creation of God to protect ourselves from those that would intend to harm us. So I would contend, me getting angry and still rehearsing these wounds about this football game, again, leads to bitterness, isn't helpful, no way constructive, that's not how God intends us to use our anger. But Jesus demonstrates to us that there are three different ways that we are to use our anger in a constructive fashion. We need to diffuse it when we have created situations of anger, reconcile with one another. So we need to be creative, use it, confront the people who have... Uh, who have harmed us in some way, diffuse it if we realize that our anger is inappropriate, reconcile with them. And so this is what Jesus encouraged us to do. But we're going to take a look at a case where anger was justified by a way that Jesus responds to something that angers him. This is from Matthew 12, chapter 21. Maybe you recognize this. This is after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And so people are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, the King of David, and so forth. Uh, uh, and, and here he comes in and into the temple. And of course, it's a big holiday season. And there are pilgrims coming from all over the world to worship at the temple because it's apparently just this spectacular, beautiful thing. And they've come prepared to sacrifice on behalf of their family and give thanks to God for his many blessings. And what does Jesus see? when he enters into the temple, but money changers and people selling pigeons. So I'm just going to read this to you. So Jesus entered the temple of God and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Okay. This is a pretty aggressive action on Jesus' part, overturning the tables and uh, throwing out and casting out those who are selling pigeons and those who are, who are uh, the money changers. Let me set the stage as first, uh, as first of all, what, what's going on here. Um, again, you have all these pilgrims coming from all over, and some priests realized this is a huh, money-making opportunity. Oh, I don't have my green, so we'll have to go with blue. It's a money-making opportunity. This is what they're singing. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. See, now the priests depended upon the generosity of people who gave to the temple. They made their living out of the offerings, but they said, you know, let's be a little bit entrepreneurial here. We can make some real big cash by the pilgrims who come to Jerusalem to the temple. How do we do this? Well, they came up with an incredibly interesting scheme. So you come in with your, oh, I don't know, you come in with your dollars, and we'll call them the, uh, the Herod dollars. I don't know what you call them. I'm, uh, so they're, they're the Herod dollars. All right, we're just doing that. Oh, I found my greeting. Okay, so they said, well, listen, we are, this is unholy money. So you can't use unholy money to purchase anything in the temple. You need to exchange it for temple money. All right. 
So, uh, so they had money changers who took your Herod money and exchanged it for temple money. Oh, of course, you got royally ripped off with that because this Herod money might be worth one dollar. Well, this might only be worth 80 cents. Okay? So you're already getting ripped off. Well, what are you going to do with that temple money? That's what you, you know, you buy your, your things around the temple that you might need for worship, like, oh, I don't know, two turtle doves for a sacrifice. Well, why can't I just bring my own? Oh, you can't bring your own. You cannot bring your own turtle doves if you would like to sacrifice them at the temple because they might be unholy. So you have to buy temple turtle doves, okay? So you need to buy the doves from the, from the folks selling the doves. Oh, guess what? This dove that might normally cost, well, let's just use this a dollar again. Say that dove is a dollar because that's a relatively inexpensive item you know, on the market if you were to go and buy it anywhere else. So you could get a turtle dove for a dollar. You might even be able to catch your own. Oh, you can't do that. What they're going to do is they're going to charge you $5 for this. Okay? For a dollar item. Oh, now you've got some leftover money. You want to take that temple dollar and exchange it back. Oh, guess what happens? That 80 cents that you have left... Uh, well, they're going to give you, I don't know, 50 cents for it. Do you see the scam that's going on here? These guys are making the big bucks off of who? Faithful pilgrims who come to Jerusalem to worship God. Oh, not just normal people, but again, the fact that it mentions doves indicates that these are poor people. Why do I say that? A rich person... <laughs> wouldn't care about the temple tax. Wouldn't care. They wouldn't buy turtle doves for sacrifice at the altar. They'd buy a sheep. So the fact that the Bible is mentioning the dove changers, the dove sellers, indicates that these are people who are targeting poor people. Two things that tick Jesus off here. Two things. One... The use of God to make a profit. We have a lot of people who use God's name to make a profit and live a lavish lifestyles. There are many television evangelists right now who are living in their multi-million dollar houses off the backs of $20, $50, $100, $1,000 donations of people who can barely put food on the table because they have been swindled into believing that if they give their last penny to this television evangelist who's using it for a lavish lifestyle, that they too will be blessed. It's a pyramid scheme, quite frankly, except like all pyramid schemes, television evangelists don't tell you that you know, you're not going to get your wealth. You're at the bottom, baby. He's at the top. You're never going to make it to the top. It's a pyramid scheme. And they got you scammed. Okay? They're making their millions. You are giving away the little bit you have. Your hundreds, your thousands, you're poor, you're broke. You are hungry. And you continue to be hungry, but he's living in his multi-million dollar mansion. Okay? So this is using God's name for you to become, for this guy to become wealthy. Alright? But there's one other thing that really upsets and angers God. What is it? Taking advantage of the poor. Or at risk. We kind of hit this a little bit last week, didn't we? This is what really disgusts God. It disgusts God when people are taken advantage of in this way, especially the poor and those who have no way to defend themselves. Societies, I hate to say, even our own, are built upon taking advantage of poor. <coughs> How do we know this? 
well, <laughs> a person who finds a way, I don't know, who invests money and finds a way to basically take advantage of poor people are investing in the markets and this guy becomes wealthy off of it, they become lionized and big CEOs. Oh, but a little guy, whoever tries to take a little bit of money ends up finding themselves in jail, okay? So we have legalized ways in which people who are rich can get richer at the expense of poor people and there are no consequences. In fact, they get richer and they are lionized for it, okay? They take advantage of the poor and we have built laws that allow rich people to take advantage of poor people. So these are the things that really gets Jesus angry. He gets so ticked off that he starts turning over the tables. Oh, pardon me. And uh, interrupting the, the uh, entrepreneurial flow of the people of the temple. And we mentioned la uh, last Sunday that there are issues that get us angry. There are issues that get us got, got angry. So for us, we get angry about what? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> A football game. We get angry about what? Somebody who just cut us off in traffic. God gets angry about things of substance. Things that harm people. Taking advantage of the poor. Using God's name to make a profit. That gives a bad... Why is that such a bad thing? It gives... Is, 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 God, is God's ego so weak? that God can't handle the use of his name for this purpose? No, here's the problem. These people who use God's name for their own personal advantage, political leaders, religious leaders, what do they do? They sully the name of God. That's not really what gets God ticked off. What gets God really ticked off is that people who need to call upon the name now have the example from the leaders of who this God is, and they're like, I don't want anything to do with a God who represents that type of stuff. They are driving people away from a relationship with God. The poor, the at risk, the people who need God are saying, if this is the way God is, I don't want anything to do with God. So this is what really angers God. When we drive people away from a relationship with God. See, there are people leaving churches and droves now, not because of God, but because of the representatives of God. Is how they're using the name of God. We should just re represent Jesus Christ, and that's it. And get out of the way. The love of God. Get out of the way. But here we are representing pyramid schemes. And get rich for the television evangelist schemes. It's all about the money, right? This is what upsets God. And so, again, Jesus has a righteous indignation and anger flips over tables. Now, this is a really aggressive use of anger. The question then becomes, oops, that's supposed to be a question mark, kind of. The question then becomes, is it ever appropriate for us to respond with what seems like such aggression? Are there ever occasions? You know, I get angry sometimes, and I'll throw a, a screwdriver across the, the floor because I'm really upset. Like, that screwdriver's really hurt me, right? You know, I can't get th something screwed into the wall, and I'm upset with the screwdriver. Oh, damn it! And I throw it across the, the wall. There, that'll teach that screwdriver, right? Screwdriver doesn't care. Screwdriver's not at fault. The fault is really with me, and I'm upset with me, and I don't know what else to do it. So I, so I take... Take that anger out on this inanimate, inanimate, inanimate object, right? Or <clears throat> we take our anger out against other people. So what makes Jesus' response of aggression against those people collecting money different than when I get anger and I get angry and I try to cut somebody off in traffic or I throw things across uh, the, the room where I flip uh, tables. See, I'm putting my family at risk and on edge when I do that. They've done absolutely nothing wrong. And an occasion in, in traffic, somebody cuts me off, I get angry, I want to cut around them and cut them off too, and I'm shaking my fist. Sometimes, you know what, just, it's just a matter of traffic coming in. 
bam, all at once here. And yeah, some people try to take advantage of getting ahead of other people. Just let it go. Diffuse it. There's nothing, un there's nothing unjust about that. There might be etiquette that we have, and they've disobeyed the etiquette. They didn't wait their turn. Is that really a righteous issue? Let it go. I'm getting better with this. But when is it appropriate to respond with aggression? This is what anger is created for. It is created as an emotional outburst that gives me power that I would not otherwise have so that I can confront those things that are unjust and that harm me and my family. So obviously, somebody cutting me off in traffic is not an issue of justice. I have to wait another two seconds. Come on. Not exactly a reason to get angry. But there are things within our family, within our church, within our country, within our world that ought to anger us. And we ought to be aggressive and confront it. Well, let me... Mentioned some of these on Sunday. Any man who would commit acts of abuse against his spouse, he starts lifting his fist and starts smacking his wife or his kids. I think that's time for somebody to pull out an iron skillet and start swinging away and throwing those skillets at the guy until he leaves the house, you lock the door, and you do not let him back in. I think aggression is always okay. It is okay for you to fight back if somebody abuses you or molests you, if it is something to protect yourself from that person's harm. And I'm again emphasizing this. Don't ever let them back in. You want to forgive? Okay, that's something that you have to work out with you and God. But forgiveness does not mean you allow them access to harming you again. We Christians think that it's, well, you know, we're Christians. We're supposed to forgive and forget and do this. And we become little sheep that get walloped and walked all over by people who take advantage of us. You don't have to allow people to take advantage of you. That's not what it means to be a Christian. So you're facing this abuse. I would say this is true even financially, okay? When there are people who take advantage of you financially, you don't have to just take it. You can confront that and say, I am not going to tolerate this. Nobody has a right to take your money. Now, I know you've got that weight against a scripture passage that you're hearing about. If somebody asks you for your cloak, give them coat, you give them your cloak as well. If he asks you to walk two miles, you walk one mile, you walk two miles, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is not what Jesus is talking about there. The, we're talking about people who would take everything from you, who lie from you, who already, it's not like they're poor. This is their scam. This is their jam. This is how they make their living, by taking advantage of people who freely give them their money and get nothing in return. Okay? You're allowed to use your anger to protect yourself against that. I mean, you're allowed to use your anger. We've got Ukraine going on right now. <clears throat> Although we don't know where to put this anger, do we? We're really righteously indignant about how the people of Ukraine are being treated right now. Where do we put that anger? Well, we got to be careful because we can't take this anger. It's, under, it's understandable. Well, the people of, of Ukraine are responding with aggression. They're not going to take it. Can't blame them. War is always a bad thing. But when you've got to protect yourself, you protect yourself. Okay? Now, we're angry about it, but there's absolutely nothing that we can do. So we have to find a constructive way to do it, uh, use our anger, so we are not taking it, it against the people around us whom we love. So maybe what we do is we send money to relief agencies. 
We use our anger as an opportunity to do something constructive to help the people who we are concerned about. This is how anger is meant to be used. It is a gift of God. And sometimes it is appropriate, even for Christians, to be really assertive and aggressive with the use of our anger. That's why God gave us the emotion. When they're in just situations, anger is appropriate and is meant to be used to protect us and those whom we love. Whew. Didn't think you'd hear that in a Bible study today. I would just end with this. Remember the things that got God really angry. The use of his name to sully his name so that people would have the wrong impression of the nature and character of God. People who took advantage of God's name to make a profit. Second, what, are th what was the other thing? So people who made a profit and people who took advantage of the risk and poor. These are the things that also ought to get us angry as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we've seen that righteous indignation, that anger of Jesus flashing for a moment in the temple. And we're uncomfortable with that type of anger because we somehow think it's not right. But there are circumstances even in our lives where anger is a good thing. Where it is okay for us to be aggressive, to use the anger that you've given us to protect ourselves and those around us, from those who intend us harm. Unfortunately, we sometimes use that anger for stupid things. <laughs> we get angry at a football game. We get angry at the car that cuts us off in traffic. And so God, we ask you also give us tools to be able to diffuse that anger. Because those cases are certainly not appropriate. There's no injustice there that has taken place. So we pray for a deepening of our relationship with you so that we might use our anger appropriately in all circumstances. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you, give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.